Remy, a 30-year-old pianist, faces a problem when he becomes the legal guardian of Marion, his girlfriend's daughter. One morning, Remy starts talking with his girlfriend, Martine, as she prepares for a job interview. Remy feels remorseful about his inability to provide financial support, which reflects on his career as an average musician. Ready to leave, Martine grabs the keys and asks if the car is gas. Remy informs her that the gas might be low. So Martine asks him for some cash. But when Remy checks, he only finds a single bill, leaving Martine frustrated. While driving to her appointment, a large truck suddenly appears in front of her. Martine swerves to avoid a collision, causing her to lose control of the car. Remy rushes to the scene. He then sees the police carrying a covered body and placing it inside their vehicle. Later that day, Martine's daughter, Marion, arrives home and greets Remy. But Remy is unresponsive. Sensing his unease, Marion joins him in the living room, checking him intently. She remarks that he seems slightly off, questioning whether the couple is fighting again. Remy assures her that they are not fighting, so Marion eventually excuses herself and goes to her room. In Marion's room, Remy enters and asks about her day. As he struggles to tell her what happened to her mother, he requests a piece of paper and starts writing about the accident. After finishing the letter, Remy grabs a basket and lets Marion know about the letter, before he leaves. When Remy returns home and sees Marion holding the letter, she asks if she lost her mother. So Remy consoles her and assures her that he will take care of her. Marion breaks down, struggling to accept the tragedy. Marion requests to live with Remy and not with his real father. So he promises her that she can live with him as long as she wants. Later that night, Remy visits Charlie, Martine's ex-husband and Marion's real father. Remy breaks the devastating news of Martine's death. Shocked by the overwhelming news, Charlie attempts to cope with the sudden loss of Martine. Remy then asks Charlie how will they handle Marion. Confused, Charlie asserts that he has the authority to make decisions for Marion. Remy acknowledges this but advises Charlie that making abrupt changes to Marion's life, school, and social circle might not be in her best interest. However, Charlie expresses his fear of losing his only daughter. The following day, Remy helps Charlie pack Marion's belongings. As Marion returns home, she notices her father waiting for her and understands that she will be living with him. She looks at Remy with disappointment, breaking his promise. With Marion out of Remy's life, he falls into a state of depression. His days are now spent with his friend Nicholas, where he passes the time reading magazines. One night, as Remy is heading home, he stops at a telephone booth and attempts to call Marion. When she answers, Remy asks for her well-being and tells her how much he misses her. However, Marion becomes silent. Frustrated by her silence, Remy asks why she has become distant and that she is the only one he can confide in. Yet, Marion remains silent, leaving Remy feeling more depressed. The following day, Remy stayed home, listening to sad songs, when the doorbell rang. So he opens the door and is surprised to see Marion standing there with her belongings. Marion decided to live with Remy. He asks if she has informed her father. Marion tells him that she left a note for his father. Later, Charlie arrives at Remy's home, asking to see Marion. Remy informs him that she is sleeping. Charlie enters her room and demands that she pack her things and go home with him. However, Marion stands her ground and insists on staying with Remy. Charlie becomes devastated. So Remy steps in and convinces Charlie to leave Marion in his care for a while. Frustrated, Charlie punches Remy, leading to a brawl in the living room. But the intense fight eventually comes to a halt as emotions subside. Marion tends to both of his fathers, displaying her compassion for both of them. Finally, Charlie accepts her daughter to stay with Remy. Remy reassures him that Marion will eventually come back to him. Charlie asks him to take care of Marion. So Remy promises that he will treat her like his own daughter. After Charlie left, Remy and Marion were in the living room. Remy asked Marion why she decided to come back. Marion expressed that she couldn't stop thinking about him. Remy then shared that he had been fired from his job. So Marion reassured him that they would figure things out together. She offers to work as a babysitter to help him with their expenses. Remy agreed and was grateful for her optimism. One night, Marion arrived home very late, because of babysitting. Remy expressed concern and advised her to take it easy on her work, emphasizing the importance of her studies as the late nights might affect her school performance. Marion agrees. Remy then notices her unease and encourages her to share whatever is on her mind. Marion shares that she might be attracted to him. Confused, he asks her why she thinks that way. Marion explains that he is constantly on her mind. Stunned, Remy gently explains that her feelings might not be entirely accurate. He explains that in a tragic incident, it's normal to have confusing feelings that will eventually subside. Marion becomes upset, not the reaction he wants coming from Remy. So she storms out, leaving Remy surprised and uncertain of how to handle the situation. The following day, Remy arrives home late and goes to his room, only to find Marion covered in his blanket. 
Feeling uncomfortable, he decides to sleep in the living room, making it clear that he has no intention of sharing a bed with her. Marion explains that she just wanted to lie in bed with him, but Remy is still puzzled and asks her why she is in his bedroom. So Marion asks Remy if he feels any attraction to her. Remy firmly denies having any such feelings. Remy then speaks from his heart and tells her that she is young and vulnerable, and he also feels a sense of responsibility toward her, believing that her late mother is watching over them and cannot betray her mother's trust by acting on any inappropriate feelings. With that, Remy decides to move to the living room, giving Marion space to return to her room. In the following days, Marion becomes increasingly depressed, isolating herself at school and avoiding interactions with others. Concerned about Marion's well-being, Remy and Charlie take her to a clinic, where the doctor observes her low weight and inquires about her eating habits. Remy informs the doctor that she is eating small amounts. So the doctor recommends vitamins to boost her health and suggests a vacation, to help lift her spirits. Charlie agrees and decides to take Marion to the mountains for some fresh air and a change of scenery. Remy accompanies Marion to the train station for her vacation. While boarding her train, Marion shares that the vacation won't cure her depression. Still, Remy dismisses her concerns and encourages her to focus on getting healthy. As they await the departure of the train, they share a meaningful gaze. Unable to resist, Remy kisses her goodbye and steps off the train. As the train leaves, he sees Marion smiling with contentment. The following day, the landlord visits Remy and informs him that he must move out. Therefore, Remy starts packing up his belongings with the help of Nicholas. On Christmas Day, Remy celebrates the holiday with Nicholas's family. Depressed about his situation, he drinks alcohol for comfort. Suddenly, the phone rings. Nicholas answers it and hands it to Remy. To his surprise, it's Marion wishing him a Merry Christmas. Marion tells her desire to be with him. So Remy burrows Nicholas's car and drives through the night to be with Marion. That morning, Remy arrives at the vacation place. He goes to a phone booth to call Marion and asks her to look outside the window. Marion sees him and waves excitedly. She rushes to his car and they kiss each other passionately. Then they go to a motel. Marion informs him that she needs to go back to her room because her father might look for her, and she promises that she will return soon. So they share a kiss and part ways. Later, Marion returns to the motel room and finds Remy sleeping. She then lies in bed next to him, gently waking him up and they start copulating. After that day, Remy returns home driving. He starts speaking to Martine beyond the grave, asking for forgiveness for what he did. Feeling ashamed, Remy promises to stop his entanglement with Marion. Back from her vacation, Marion arrives at the train station. Remy greets her and kisses her chicks, but Marion is displeased with his greeting. Later, they arrived at their new home. The new home is old and musty. Remy takes her upstairs to show his room to which Marion assumes that they will be sharing. However, Remy leads Marion to her room, which is surprisingly decent. In the living room, Remy expresses that what happened between them was a mistake and should remain a secret. Marion agrees, assuring him that she will keep their secret safe. However, her delight in the situation leaves Remy conflicted. So Remy clarifies to Marion that they cannot repeat what happened in the motel, leaving Marion disappointed. One night, Remy arrives home to see a bunch of motorcycles parked in front of their house. As he enters, he is greeted by a lively gathering of boys filling the living room. At the center of the crowd is Marion, smiling, trying to make Remy jealous. Overwhelmed, Remy navigates through the crowd and makes his way upstairs. Annoyed, Remy tosses his jacket and decides to visit Nicholas. Together, they spend the evening playing their music. After some time, Remy returns home once again and now sees only one motorcycle. He enters the house and passes a guy. Curious, Remy checks Marion and asks if she had a good time with her new friends. Marion smiles and informs him that they just kissed. So Remy reminds her not to let things get out of hand. In response, Marion assures him that she will never be involved with anyone but him. Soon after, Remy works at a luxurious party where Marion is also attending. After the guests finish eating, a young gentleman turns on some upbeat music. So Remy stops playing his music and the young group gathers and starts dancing to the lively tunes. The host of the party approaches Remy to apologize for ending his performance. She then invites him for a meal, but Remy politely declines, expressing his desire to go home. She respects his decision and informs him that his payment is already in his jacket, with a little bonus for his charming performance. Marion sees the host flirting with Remy, so she disrupts them, kisses him goodbye, and continues dancing with her peers. Marion gets home at dawn, she goes to Remy and apologizes for getting home very late. She then asks him if he wants some morning coffee. In the living room, Marion made Remy a coffee, but Remy is observing her. Remy shares with Marion that he is tired of doing the right thing. Marion is happy about his surrender. The same day, Charlie visits their new home. Remy and Marion are startled by the doorbell. Remy tells her to stay in bed and he goes to the door and is surprised to see Charlie. 
Charlie just returned to Paris and wants to see Marion. Nervous, Remy makes up an excuse, saying that Marion is at school, and suggests to come back later. However, Charlie insists on talking to Remy for a minute. As they sit down to talk, Marion unexpectedly comes downstairs. Charlie was surprised, assuming she should be at school. Despite the tension, Marion greets her father. Remy then distances himself. Charlie then remarks on her attire, questioning if she always dresses this way, she replies that she just woke up. Seeing an opportunity to lie, Remy asks Marion why she isn't in school. Marion catches on to his lie and acts along, explaining that her teacher is sick. Feeling left out of their life, Charlie proposes that they can all live together in his house. Remy pretends to be receptive to the idea. So Charlie asks them to think about it and left. But Charlie returns and asks if they might be doing something inappropriate. Remy became defensive. So Charlie apologizes and blames his fatigue. After Charlie leaves, Remy sits in relief and tells Marion that he is afraid. One night, Marion rushes home, urgently waking up Remy. She explains that the child she is babysitting is sick and in need of help. So they both dash to the house. Once there, Remy examines the child, Natalie. Realizing it may be severe, Remy asks Marion to call her parents. But Marion cannot reach her mother who is a single parent. So he decides to call a doctor. After checking her, the doctor informs them that the illness is not serious but it is wise to call for medical help. The mother, Charlotte, arrives home and is surprised to see the doctor. Marion informs her about Natalie's illness and their decision to call the doctor. So Charlotte attends to her daughter. While attending to Natalie, Remy seems to be infatuated with Charlotte and Marion notices him. After attending to Natalie, she thanks Marion for taking good care of her daughter, and to show her appreciation, she pays Marion a decent amount. The following day, Remy decides to visit Charlotte. As he approaches her home, he hears the mesmerizing sound of the piano. Charlotte hears the doorbell and answers the door, she is surprised to see Remy. Remy asks about Natalie's health. Charlotte informs him that her daughter is doing well, thanking him for his help. Charlotte then invites him inside, which he kindly accepts. As they sit down and enjoy their tea, Charlotte asks about Remy's personal life. Remy, who is usually reserved, shares some details about his life. In turn, he asks Charlotte if she is a musician. She responds happily, revealing that she is a professional pianist and happy about her chosen career. Soon after, Remy and Marion attend Charlotte's piano recital. Remy is captivated by her performance. Marion notices Remy's affectionate glances toward Charlotte. After the recital, Remy reveals to Marion that he has given up on his music aspirations. He requests Marion not to tell Charlotte about his musical career. Marion agrees on one condition. She understands that Remy wants to court Charlotte, and she won't stand in his way. But she wants Remy to be available for her whenever she needs him. Remy wholeheartedly agrees, promising Marion that he will be available for her. Later, Marion visits her father, Charlie, at his pub. Surprised, Charlie notices her demeanor and asks if she is alright. Marion sits in silence for a moment before expressing her wish to live with him for a while. Charlie happily agrees. Marion embraces her father, grateful for his support. Meanwhile, Remy and Charlotte enjoy a delightful evening. As the night progresses, Charlotte invites Remy to her bedroom, and they start to be intimate. Unaware that Natalie is witnessing their activity, 